Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to talk on one of the most important topics. Friends, we are going to discuss about the world after 1945. Yes, we are going to discuss on the emergence of Cold War. We are going to discuss uh, uh, what caused the Cold War as well as we are going to discuss on what were the consequences of Cold War as well as many aspects of the Cold War. Friends, for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios Dr. Sujit Thakur. Dr. Sujit Thakur is Assistant Professor in the Department of Political Science, Tyalsing College, University of Delhi. Friends, we know that today's topic is very, very interesting. And if you feel so that you need to ask questions on today's topic, then do call us through our toll-free number. Our number is 18001010430. I repeat, our number is 18001010430. You are requested to call in the last 10 minutes of the lecture only, as well as, dear friends, you are kindly requested to ask questions relevant to the topic only, that is, regarding the Cold War only. Now, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. Suji Thakur, and would request him to explain us in detail about the Cold War. Hello, sir. Welcome okay. to the lecture. <coughs> Thank you, Gitika. Uh, and a very, very good afternoon to my viewers. Uh, in fact, today we are going to discuss about the emergence of the Cold War. And this time, basically, we are going to discuss why the Cold War began. What, was, uh, what, were, uh, what were the factors that led to the emergence of the Cold War? In fact, as all of uh, us knowing this fact very well, that from last previous lectures we have been discussing about the overall development of the 20th century world. And in this series, today we are going to discuss about the emergence of the Cold War and basic hypothesis of this lecture is to know uh, why and what kind of factors that led to the emergence of Cold War. See, in this whole lectures, I have divided this lectures in the two sections. One is historical and uh, narrative part, where I am going to discuss about the, all the historical uh, dimensions where uh, all of uh, you are knowing that, you see the Yalta conference, uh, then the Postdam conference, uh, Iron Curtain speech uh, or the Fulton speech, then other, other factors that led to the emergence of the Cold War. Then in the second sections, what we are going to discuss about the theoretical and uh, theoretical propositions of the Cold War, where there are a number of theoretical propositions that are discussing about okay, why the Cold War began. Uh, uh, within the uh, three ministry perspective of the uh, uh, theoretical understanding of the uh, understanding for the regions of the uh, emergence of the Cold War, we know one is the traditional and orthodox version of the Cold War, where they said okay, it was the Soviet Union that uh, uh, created such kind of environment that led to the Cold War. Uh, then there is another uh, perspective that is the called the revisionist perspective that emerged in the 60s and it, it basically started uh, uh, making this kind of assertions that it was not the Soviet Union, it was the America that led to the emergence of the Cold War. Then in the 80s, what we, uh, what we have witnessed or even after the 60s, what we witnessed that there is a post-revisionist school emerge uh, or that started discussing about the what are the regions that led to the emergence of the Cold War. And th th their understanding and their assertion is completely different from the traditionalist and orthodox. And they started telling, you know, in, uh, in the allegations or accusations whether America started or the Soviet Union started. That is not the issue. The issue is something different. And uh, they started an analyzing that issue. You see, it's the, it's the domestic politics and other factors that led to the emergence of the Cold War. Then when we started discussing about the nature of the Cold War, why the Cold War began, then there are a number of perspectives emerged, like the historian, the uh, Friedman Halliday, uh, then the realist perspective, some internationalist uh, perspective, idealist per perspective. And in these all second sections we are going to discuss and it will give you a new understanding to understand why the Cold War began. Because uh, till today, we, ha we have been generally as a student of the undergraduation, we study about you see, uh, what happened in the Yal Yalta conference, what happened to the post dam conference, what happened to the uh, uh, Fulton speech, uh, how um, the, the question of Poland uh, was discussed and how the Germany was divided, how uh, on the name of the issue of uh, sphere of influence, both the powers started uh, working against each other. We we know these all the factors, but 
uh, knowing all these factors, what, uh, we just uh, given a bit academic understanding for all of you. You see, one side you have a historical and narrative perspective, and another side you must know what are the theoretical propositions that will give you the insight uh, of different kind of perspective uh, uh, that uh, contradicting each other. You see, it's not the factor. The factor is uh, something more that led to the emergence of the Cold War. So, जब हम इस lectures की चर्चा कर रहे हैं कि आखिर दूसरी विश्व युद्ध के बाद शीत युद्ध क्यों प्रारंभ हुआ, तो इस पूरे lecture क्रम में हम ये कोशिश कर रहे हैं, ये जानने का प्रयास कर रहे हैं कि आखिर दूसरी विश्व युद्ध के बाद दूसरी विश्व युद्ध के बाद कौन से से factors थे जो कि जो एक सही तो मोर्चा था वह एक साथ ना होकर अलग-अलग धुरी में बट गया और एक नई-नई व्यवस्था को का साथ देने लगा इस इस चर्चा के क्रम को जब हम शुरुआत करते हैं तो हम ये जाने की कोशिश करते हैं कि इसको हमने दो भागों में इस पूरे के पूरे लेक्चर्स को रखा है एक लेक्चर का सीरीज है कि भाई जो हिस्टोरिकल एंड नैरेटिव पार्ट्स हैं जिसको हम डिस्क्रिप्टिव पार्ट्स करते हैं वर्णात्मक विश्लेषण जिसको हम कहते हैं उसके आधार पर हम करने की कोशिश करते हैं जिसमें हम कहते हैं कि भाई द्वितीय विश्व युद्ध के बाद पूरी दुनिया जो जो थी वो एक प्रकार के नए विश्व व्यवस्था में प्रवेश कर रही थी और यह अपेक्षा किया गया था कि जो वॉर टाइम कोलिशंस हैं वो आगे भी काम करेगा और एक नई दुनिया को स्थापित करेगा और एक नई दुनिया में कलेक्टिव सिक्योरिटी का जो कंसेप्ट था वुड्रो विल्सन्स का 1920s में वो फिर आगे बढ़ेगी और दुनिया एक शांतिपूर्ण व्यवस्था के रूप में काम करेगा लेकिन ऐसा हुआ नहीं हुआ ऐसा कि जैसे से समय बीता गया विश्व युद्ध की समाप्ति अपने अंतिम दौर में अंतिम पड़ाव में आती गई उसी समय से एक बिक्रिंग देखने को मिला एक तनाव देखने को मिला खासकर के स्टर्न एंड वेस्टर्न अलायंस पार्टनर्स में तो ये क्यों हुआ किस कारण से हुआ और ये एक ऐसा कारण बना जिस कारण हमने देखा कि पूरी दुनिया जो है 1945 टू 1990 बिल्कुल आपको दो दो ध्रुव्य दुनिया बदल चुकी थी तो इसी फैक्टर को जब हम चर्चा करने की कोशिश करते हैं इसी को जानने की जब हम कोशिश करते हैं तो ये पूरा पूरा हाइपोथेसिस जो हमारी परिकल्पना है वो यह है कि आखिर वट फैक्टर लेड टू द इमरजेंस ऑफ द कोल्ड वार कौन सा ऐसा कारण था जो द्वितीय विश्व युद्ध को जन्म दिया तो उसको हमने दो सीरीज में दो भागों में बांटा अपने लेक्चर्स को और पहला भाग जो है वो ये चर्चा करता है कि आखिर द्वितीय विश्व युद्ध के बाद जो याल्टा कॉन्फ्रेंस हुआ उसके बाद पुस्डैम कॉन्फ्रेंस हुआ उसके बाद जो विस्टन चर्चिल का जो फुलटन स्पीच था उसके बाद जो एक प्रकार का सैन्य गठबंधन किसी न किसी रूप में अप्रक्ष रूप से सोवियत यूनियन और अमेरिका के द्वारा करने का प्रयास किया उसके बाद जो पॉलिसी ऑफ कंटेनमेंट थी जिसका जॉर्ज जौर, जॉर्ज कैनन को माना जाता है कि प्रतिपादक है साथ ही साथ एक जो वैश्विक व्यवस्था थी उसको हम समझने की कोशिश करते हैं वहीं दूसरी तरफ जब दूसरे पार्ट ऑफ सेक्शन में हम जाते हैं तो उसको हम थोड़ा एकेडमिक थोटिकल प्रपोजिशन में देखने की कोशिश करते हैं उसमें तीन प्रकार के मुख्य सिद्धांत की हम चर्चा करते हैं ट्रेडिशनल ऑर्थोडॉक्स वर्जन की चर्चा करते हैं रिविजनिस्ट की चर्चा करते हैं पोस्ट रिविजनिस्ट की चर्चा करते हैं साथ ही साथ हम नेचर ऑफ कोल्ड वार के रूप में हम जब जानने की कोशिश करते हैं कि आखिर ये जो या जब शीत युद्ध था वो क्यों हुआ किस लिए हुआ क्या ये वैचारिक लड़ाई थी या या क्या दो दो शक्तियों के बीच की लड़ाई थी या जिस प्रकार की दुनिया बदलते रहती है उस दुनिया में दो महत्वपूर्ण शक्तियां उभरी तो वो अपने अपने सत्ता के या अपने अपने प्रभाव को विस्तार करने के लिए लड़ाई थी तो इस चीज की चर्चा जब हम करने की कोशिश करते हैं तो हम देखते हैं कि जैसे फ्रेड हेलीडे का नाम आता है जो रही हिस्टोरियन स्टोरी, थे जिन्होंने ये बात रखी थी कि विचारधारा जो है महत्वपूर्ण है साथ ही साथ हम इस बात की भी चर्चा करते हैं रियलिस्ट परस्पेक्टिव में कि आखिर वो क्या कहते हैं तो वो कहते हैं कि टू राइवरी ऑफ टू पावर्स था फिर हम आइडियलिस्ट परसेप्शन की चर्चा करते हैं फिर हम इंटरनेशनलिस्ट परसेप्शन की चर्चा करते हैं फिर हम स्टेबिलिटी थ्योरी की चर्चा करते हैं तो कहने का अर्थ हुआ कि इन लेक्चर के माध्यम से हम यह जानने की कोशिश करते हैं कि आखिर क्या कारण हुआ कि उन्नीस के बाद दुनिया एक अलग स्वरूप में देखने को मिली तो इसी चीज को हम आपको समझने के लिए जानने के लिए स्लाइड के माध्यम से समझाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं तो हियर द फर्स्ट स्लाइड इज टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस इज द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द कोल्ड वार हियर देर आर फोर एंड फाइव पॉइंट हाउ द कोल्ड वार बिगेन वॉट द फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट किसी आफ्टर द सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वार वी ऑल स्टार्ट थिंकिंग दैट किसी this uh, co- uh, the uh, the war time collisions would work uh, in the future uh, in continue in the peace times and the world would be a different kind where the uh, where the uh, where the prospect for the peaceful post war world order would be possible but uh, what we witnessed that ki after the yalta and after the post dam 
it has started uh, clear see what what the understanding of the world leaders what the understanding of the world you see uh, this war time coalitions of the east eastern and the western forces would continue in the second world war uh, second world war time that would started uh, uh, started uh, uh, seeing divisions within the coalition partners and the division within the coalition partner also witnessed uh, during the war itself and the western eastern alliance started uh, uh, capturing their uh, space of influence so they started trying to tell us you see in this uh, two three slides what we understood you see whatever the understanding of the world at that at, during uh, 1945 you see this all the four powers or the five great powers would work in the in the future as a collective partners to safeguard the world peace and would uh, and the world would witness a new kind of uh, uh, world order in coming days that would not happen what would uh, what the uh, what what the situations uh, would emerge after immediately or or during the uh, world war that you see the so the, the, there were bickering started between the soviet union and the uh, western led alliance and both started uh, playing their own uh, uh, game of interest and uh, the world uh, uh, once again witness uh, another kind of rivalry between the two power blocks so uh, 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 um, by un understanding this point what we try to understand you see uh, uh, what the uh, after first world war uh, the woodrow wilson, woodrow wilson imagined for the collective security and trying to form a league of nations and it it, it didn't work what we witnessed after the second world war also though the united nations started uh, we, the, the the coalition partners started thinking about a for formation of the coalition, coalition uh, uh, system at the world level by forming the united nations but once again the division between the uh, imp uh, great powers led to the emergence of the cold war so how it led to the emergence of the cold war here what we, we are finding the first sub summit uh, that was held in the yalt that is the uh, so soviet crimea area uh, here uh, uh, the all the uh, victors and all the great powers of the world started uh, like, uh, uh, discussing about the for formations of the future uh, world order and there they started talking about you see how we can form the united nation organizations and the, and there because uh, the, the, till that time the woodrow, woodrow Franklin Roosevelt was the president of the America, and he was one of the most influential personality uh, during uh, the Second World War and also after the Second World War. And this con uh, conference, he proposed for the uh, formation of the uh, United Nations in place of the League of Nations. And he had uh, this kind of ambitions that you see in the post uh, Second World War era, the four great power would uh, uh, work together. Especially when he talked about the four great power, great. Power, then he was talking about the America, Great Britain, uh, China, and <coughs> uh, uh, and Soviet Union. But he he didn't uh, consider France as a great power because France was already devastated in the Second World War, and it would, it would not in a situation where the France would also play a very active role. So. Uh, uh, so he said, you see, these all the uh, four great powers would act as a world policeman in the proposed uh, United Nations organizations. But suddenly, uh, after 1945, in April, basically, the Franklin Roosevelt died, and his successor Truman was very much suspicious towards the Soviet Union. And uh, whatever the proposal of the Yalta Conference, you see, we would form the a, a peaceful coalitions uh, uh, between the east and west and we would provide a, a stable uh, world order in the coming times that would uh, started facing certain kind of difficulty and that difficulty emerged within the yalta conference on the number of issues like uh, voting arrangements for the proposed organizations because the soviet union started demanding to see uh, there all the republics uh, the, the, the all the states under the soviet union confederations would have the same right and to vote in the United Nations General Assembly, and they would also get a membership. But the America opposed, and they said that would not be possible because if you would wish to have a 
membership for the all the states then america state would also have then the agreement reached on uh, this kind of thing the america proposed that kc you would also get the three uh, republic um, membership in the international general assembly but uh, but america would also get a uh, membership of the three states uh, and the agreement would not reach on on that issue then on the second agreement on the veto power of the p5 Uh, like the France, Britain, uh, uh, America, Soviet Union, and the China, and the, uh, and uh, on certain kind of reluctance, it was accepted by the all the great power. But the major concerns once again emerge about the dispositions of the Germany. What kind of nature of the Germany would be? Because uh, there are different uh, Germany would be divided in the four uh, occupational zone. One is uh, led by the America, another by the Great Britain, third one by the France, and fourth one by the Soviet Union. So, what would be the future and how it would be work? because uh, it, it was a big question because the, uh, the eastern part it was dominated by the soviet forces uh, occupied by the uh, occupied by the soviet union and the industrial area was occupied by the uh, america france and uh, great britain so it create lot of problem later on uh, when germany got divided in 1949 so we will go, going to discuss about this then uh, uh, regarding the um, declaration of liberated europe because see Uh, in the yalta conference itself uh, the, the the proposal was because see uh, woodrow wilson was also a, uh, a great uh, institutional liberalist and the uh, franklin roosevelt also talking about you no know, the world should be where every um, society every people would have a uh, uh, right to uh, express their uh, free will so what kind of system they want what kind of Uh, uh, particular system they wish to enjoy so no one would uh, force uh, 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 the, the group of peoples or the society or the nations to uh, follow certain kind of system so uh, he talk uh, he 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 started uh, giving the proposal of declaration of liberty to europe but um, the eastern uh, the stalin uh, didn't uh, endorse such kind of uh, philosophy and the controversy started with the formation of the state government in the poland, uh, poland by the stalin and that led to the another conference that is called the post dam conference because the post dam conference in 1945 see the two regions you must know because that uh, roosevelt died and he was the great supporter of the world peace and new kind of uh, uh, world system that would be that would be combinations of all the forces but the two men was very much suspicious towards the Uh, Stalin and the Soviet system, and equally the uh, the, the Western Churchill, who was uh, very much uh, cautious about the, all this uh, communist uh, system and uh, Stalin's uh, uh, perspective to uh, um, uh, uh, lead a new uh, world system. So, but the uh, Western Churchill also lost the elections in, in July, and he uh, quit the. You know, prime ministership and the Clement Attlee, the Labour Party prime minister, would become a uh, prime minister of Britain. So the scenario has been also changed in the post-dam conference. But basically, the post-dam conference was uh, uh, on the issue of the uh, issue of the pollen. And why the pollen issue was uh, uh, important? Because there were the two kind of systems prevailed there: one uh, by the communist, another by the non-communist. but uh, uh, how the boundary issue of the poland would be settled uh, that is basically very important for the soviet union and france and others because france was also eyeing for the baltic sea and the soviet union was also very much uh, concerns about because he, he soviet union knowing that ki whenever the germany invaded uh, the uh, the Soviet Union that that it 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 inrooted through the Poland, so it he was uh, very much uh, uh, concerns about the Poland future, and before the conference started, he uh, announced that you see the Soviet Union already settled the boundary issues with the Poland, and that somewhere uh, um, created a anxiety or one kind of division between the world. great powers and then the postdem conference without any kind of conclusions uh, uh, ended and the and the the common declaration emerged like the sail await the peace settlement means in the future we are going to discuss about the peace settlement so it all created a big problem for the uh, uh, leaders but uh, before discussing about the iron curtain speech uh, uh, once again i will repeat all these things 
कहने का अर्थ यह हुआ कि जब ये द्वित विश्व युद्ध के बाद जब एक प्रकार की सोच इमर्ज की कि आने वाली दुनिया कैसी होनी चाहिए और किस प्रकार की होनी चाहिए तो उसमें हमने देखा कि दो प्रकार के कॉन्फ्रेंस होते हैं कि याल्टा कॉन्फ्रेंस होता है कि पोस्ट डैम कॉन्फ्रेंस होता है याल्टा कॉन्फ्रेंस मुख्य रूप से इस रूप में हुई कि भाई दुनिया किस को किस प्रकार की व्यवस्था मिलनी चाहिए और जिससे राष्ट्रों के बीच विवाद हो तो पूर्ण उसको सुलझा सकेगा तो उसके लिए लीग ऑफ नेशन की जगह यूनाइटेड नेशन की बात की गई यूनाइटेड नेशन की स्थापना पर सभी राष्ट्र सहमत हुए चाहे सोवियत यूनियन हो या अमेरिका हो या ग्रेट ब्रिटेन हो चाहे फ्रांस हो चाहे चाइना हो सभी ने अपनी सहमति दी और लेकिन उसमें विवाद इस बात को लेकर उठा कि सोवियत यूनियन ने कहा कि हमारे जो भी रिपब्लिक हैं जो स्टेट्स हैं सोवियत यूनियन कन्फेडरेशन के तहत उनको भी जनरल असेंबली में मेम्बरशिप मिलनी चाहिए जिस पर अमेरिका ने उस पर ऑब्जेक्शन लगाया और कहा कि संभव नहीं है यदि आप ऐसा चाहते हैं तो अधिक से अधिक तीन राज्यों को आप मेंबरशिप दी जा सकती है लेकिन वो उस सत्य पर दी जा सकती है कि अमेरिका के भी जो तीन राज्य हैं वो भी अपने आप में स्वायत्त हैं तो उन्हें भी वह व्यवस्था दी जाएगी तो इस पर असहमति बनी रही और बाद में यह फैसला टाल दिया गया उसके बाद हम देखते हैं कि जो यूनाइटेड नेशंस में जो आपने देखा होगा कि जो विजन था खास करके फ्रैंकलिन रूजबेल्ट का कि दुनिया में जो महत्वपूर्ण शक्तियां हैं वो एक कलेक्टिव सिक्योरिटी के माध्यम से दुनिया को एक नई पुलिस व्यवस्था के रूप में देखें और कहीं भी यदि समस्या उठती है तो उनको हम मिलकर समस्या का समाधान करें तो उन्होंने खास करके चीन ग्रेट ब्रिटेन रसिया और अमेरिका को फोर वर्ल्ड पुलिस मैन के रूप में माना था और कहा था कि आने वाले समय में यदि कोई प्रॉब्लम होगी तो ये इस समस्या का समाधान करेंगे तो उस चर्चे के दौरान यह भी हुआ कि भाई यूनाइटेड नेशन सक्सेसफुल कैसे होगा क्या लीग ऑफ नेशन की तरह वो फेल्योर तो नहीं हो जाएगा तो उस बात को लेकर फ्रेंड रिजमेंट ने यह भी एसोरेंस दिया कि अमेरिका जो अपनी आइसोलेशन की पॉलिसी अपनाता था वो आइसोलेशन की पॉलिसी नहीं अपनाएगा और साथ ही साथ एक महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका विश्व स्तर पर निर्वाह करेगा तो एक पी फाइव परमानेंट फाइव मेंबर्स का एक अरेंजमेंट किया गया जो कि कलेक्टिव सिक्योरिटी की अवधारणा को आगे बढ़ाएगा तो इस बात को लेकर चली तीसरा जो महत्वपूर्ण मुद्दा था वो ये था कि भाई जो जो यूरोप में जो डिफरेंट प्रकार के सिस्टम्स जो चल रहे थे खास करके जो ईस्टर्न यूरोप में जो था वहाँ पर अलग अलग व्यवस्थाएं थी अलग अलग राष्ट्र व्यवस्था का उभार हो रहा था तो उसमें ये कहा गया कि भाई जो भी जनसंख्या है जो जिस प्रकार की चाहत रखती है जिस प्रकार की व्यवस्था वो अपनाना चाहती है उनको वो मौका दिया जाए उस पर भी कहीं ना कहीं एक प्रकार की समस्या हुई और फिर जो सबसे बड़ी इशू था पोलैंड को लेकर कि पोलैंड का क्या होगा भविष्य या जर्मनी का क्या भविष्य होगा तो जर्मनी के भविष्य को भी लेकर ये चिंता जताई गई कि किस प्रकार से इसको डिवीजन किया जाएगा तो ये कहा गया कि भाई एक सिंगल इकोनॉमिक यूनिट के रूप में जर्मनी को माना जाएगा और फ्रांस ग्रेट ब्रिटेन सोवियत यूनियन और अमेरिका के बीच चार भागों में उसको एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव जोन में बांट दिया गया लेकिन समस्या वहाँ उठी कि जो ईस्टर्न जोन था वो एग्रीकल्चर पार्ट था और वेस्टर्न जोन था इंडस्ट्रियल पार्ट था और दोनों एक दूसरे पर इंटरडिपेंडेंट थे लेकिन जो बिकरिंग प्रारंभ हुई दोनों में जो संशय का स्थिति प्रारंभ हुआ वो उस स्थिति को और बढ़ाते चला गया पोस्ट टाइम कॉन्फ्रेंस जो ईस्टर्न जर्मनी में खास करके जो बर्लिन के बगल का शहर था वहाँ पर जब बुलाया गया कि भाई पोलैंड की समस्याओं कैसे समाधान किया जाए तो पोलैंड का जो प्रश्न था वो यही था कि वहाँ दो प्रकार की व्यवस्था चल रही थी एक कॉम्युनिस्ट सिस्टम चल रही थी एक नॉन कॉम्युनिस्ट सिस्टम चल रही थी और फ्रेंकलिन डी रुजवेल्ट का ये मानना था कि भाई जो वहाँ की जनता जो चाहती है उनको फ्री विल दिया जाए और वो ये डिसाइड करें कि वो किस प्रकार की व्यवस्था अपनाना चाहते हैं लेकिन स्टॉलिन उसके लिए तैयार नहीं था और ये जो था कि भाई अपने अपने फोर्सेस विड्रॉ करेंगे तो चूंकि जितना स्टर्न एफेयर स्टर्न स्टर्न जोन ऑफ यूरोप था वहाँ पर सोवियत सेनाएं ज़्यादा थी क्योंकि जो लैंड आर्मी थी वो सोवियत के पास ज़्यादा थी और आर्मी और नेवी में बढ़ियता अमेरिका और ग्रेट ब्रिटेन को ज़्यादा था तो इसलिए जो और फिजिकल ऑक्यूपेशन था पूरा ईस्टर्न यूरोप में वो आपको सोवियत यूनियन का था तो स्वभाव तो है कि ये बड़ा मुश्किल हो रहा था कि जो वहाँ जो जो खास करके फ्रैंकलिन डी रुजबेल्ट ने इस बात को जो बार बार ये बात करने की कोशिश करे थी कि फ्री इस डिक्लेरेशन ऑफ द फ्री स्पीच की जो बात कर रहे थे या फ्री विल की जो बात कर रहे थे जनता का कि भाई उनको ये स्वायत्ता होनी चाहिए वो किस प्रकार की व्यवस्था चाहते हैं इसको लेकर कहीं ना कहीं विवाद था और अंत में विवाद इतना बढ़ गया कि जब जब, जब ये पोस्ट डैम कॉन्फ्रेंस हुआ तो सोवियत यूनियन ने यह कहा कि जो वहाँ की जो कम्युनिस्ट सरकार है जिसको हमने मान्यता दे रखी है वहाँ उनके माध्यम से हमारा हमने बाउंड्री को रिस्टमेंट कर लिया इसको लेकर जो सोवियत अमेरिका और ग्रेट ब्रिटेन और फ्रांस में काफ़ी 
नाराजगी जाहिर की और अंत में पोस्ट डेम कॉन्फ्रेंस बिना कंक्लूजन के समाप्त होगी और ये कहा गया कि भाई जो शांति की जो सोच है वो हम शांति का जो ये जो पीस सेटलमेंट की जो बात है खासकर वेस्टर्न यूरोप का इस पर हम चर्चा बाद में देखेंगे और इट विल अवेट फॉर ए मोमेंट तो उसी चीज को जब एक प्रकार का ये समस्या ऑलरेडी दोनों राष्ट्र याल्टा और पोस्टडेम कॉन्फ्रेंस में ये स्पष्ट हो चुका था कि दोनों ध्रुव जो है कहीं ना कहीं अपनी सोच को लेकर अलग अलग हैं उसी बात को लेकर खास करके हालांकि विस्टन चर्चिल प्रधानमंत्री पद से हट चुके थे लेकिन एक महत्वपूर्ण पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज के नेता थे कंजरवेटिव का उनका एक बड़ा प्रभाव था उन्नीस में पुनः वो ब्रिटेन के प्रधानमंत्री बने तो उन्होंने एक स्पीच दिया खास करके 1946 में जिसको माना जाता है कि वो वाटर सेट मोमेंट था वो एक मुख्य मोमेंट था जिसके कारण उसे कोल्ड वार प्रारंभ होता है and that is called the iron curtain speech because they on march 90, 1946 in a speech of westminster college in fulton missouri western churches coined the term term to describe the wall between the east and west he said the church blamed the soviet union and its desire for ideological and political military expansions for the emerging east to west conflict taking a leave from appeasement policy prior to the second world war he argued for united front of the britain and us saying as this बट ही ट्राई टू सेट इट किसी वेन स्टार्ट डेलिविंग द लेक्चर ही सेट किसी इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड द वे द फ्रांस एंड ब्रिटेन स्टार्टेड अपीजिंग द जर्मनी एंड द पॉलिसी ऑफ द हिटलर एंड द मोसॉलनी दैट लेड टू द इमरजेंस ऑफ द सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वॉर देर फोर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कंटेन एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नॉट अगेन डू द सेम मिस्टेक what we did in the after the second world war then the great britain and, and uh, america should jointly work and contain all kind of the wish uh, of the soviet union uh, which wanted to create a revolutions uh, uh, across the europe and establish a communist form of the system and uh, their intention is to uproot the whole the uh, whole the capitalist and liberal systems and establish the form of the system Uh, and uh, we we must understand uh, uh, the philosophy and the basic ideology uh, ideological differences of the uh, east and west and the scholars and the uh, analysis and understanding see this speech would create a landmark and this create a division between the east and west more than what uh, the policy of containment other started after following this kind of policy तो कहने का अर्थ हुआ कि आयरन कटन की स्पीच की जो बात बार बार कही जा रही है उसमें यह कहा गया था कि भाई मुख्य रूप से जो ये बात कहा गया उसके पीछे तर्क ये था कि विश्व चर्चिल ने जो ये एक लेक्चर अपना एड्रेस किया आफ्टर प्राइम मिनिस्टर पद से रिलिंकुश करने का उनका कहा था कि एक वैचारिक विरोध है ईस्ट एंड वेस्ट के बीच में और यदि हम जो तुष्टिकरण की नीति के कारण जिस प्रकार का द्वितीय विश्व युद्ध हुआ यदि हम हिटलर और मुसोलनी को उसी समय रोक देते जापान को उसी समय रोक देते तो शायद हमें ये इतना डिवास्टिंग वार को देखना नहीं मिलता इसलिए उसने कहा कि यदि आप सोवियत संघ की नीति को जानने की कोशिश करेंगे तो उसका भी एक वैचारिक समाजवादी सोच है और वो चाहता है कि उस वैचारिक समाजवादी सोच को अपने सैन्य बल से या अपने अन्य हथगंडों को अपना वह एक नई व्यवस्था स्थापित करना चाहता है विशेषकर जो उदारवादी पूंजीवादी व्यवस्था है उसके माध्यम से तो इसी बात को लेकर कहा था है कि जो आयन कटिन स्पीच जो था जो फोल्डन स्पीच जो था जो विष्णु चर्चिल का जो स्पीच था जिसमें वो कहा था कि हमें एक प्रकार की सुरक्षा चक्र बनाना चाहिए खास करके ये साम्यवादी प्रभाव को रोकने के लिए तो उस सुरक्षा चक्र को कहा जाता है उसने एक आयरन एक पॉलिसी ऑफ कंटेनमेंट को जन्म दिया जो कि पूरे पूरे शिव युद्ध को उन्नीस सौ पैंतालीस से नब्बे तक दो, दो, दो ध्रुव में विश्व को मार दिया इसको हम आगे चलते बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर आपका और मित्रों हम यही चाहेंगे कि आप हमारे साथ बने रहें एक छोटे से अंतराल के बाद हम आप सभी के सम्मुख पुनः प्रस्तुत होते हैं और उसके उपरांत इस चर्चा को जारी रखेंगे हमें देखने के लिए आप सभी का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद
Hello friends, welcome back to this session. Friends, as you know that today we are talking on emergence of Cold War and for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios Dr. Sajid Thakur. Dr. Sajid Thakur is Assistant Professor in Dal Singh College, University of Delhi. Friends, we know that you might have questions in mind. If you want to connect to us, do call us through our toll-free number. Our number is one eight double zero double one zero four three zero. You are requested to call in the last 10 minutes as well as kindly ask questions relevant to the topic only. Now, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. Sujit Thakur, once again. Hello, sir. Welcome yeah. to the lecture. In continuity, <laughs> continuity with the, our uh, understanding about the uh, regions and the factors that led to the emergence of the Cold War, here once again we are discussing about the three narratives what led to the emergence of the Cold War. Here there is a one, uh, one narrative is the long telegram of 1946. The author of the policy of containment about the George Kennan and George Kennan was very influential. Uh, and people are telling, you see, it was the long telegra telegram uh, that created a, a mistrust, a misunderstanding about the Soviet Union and the America. And because George Kennan was the ambassador uh, to the USA in the uh, SSR, and he, uh, when uh, the uh, Secretary of State asked uh, him, to send the uh, Soviet foreign policy conduct. He wrote uh, everything about the Soviet Union that you see uh, his policy is very expansionist and he tried to create a new kind of uh, world, uh, world order and as long as we would not uh, uh, contain uh, the Soviet Union, it would uh, maybe emerge as another imperialist power of the world. So if America want to uh, play a very important role in the global system, then they would have to stop the policy of Soviet Union. And the same perspective uh, uh, also, uh, when the so so uh, Soviet ambassador in the America, Nikola uh, Novikov, through the uh, mirror image, because that published after the 1960s in the in the public view. He also had a similar view about the America and he also given all kind of inputs to the stall in that see the America, America vision has to reestablish its own uh, over, uh, order according to their own principles and if Soviet Union would have to, uh, uh, to follow its ideological uh, 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 ideological orientations uh, towards the world and the motive, the, the goal, what to establish the world socialist system, then they would have to contain the America, um, America uh, influence across the uh, Europe. So that divided uh, once again and this policy would uh, started playing a very important role in, in creating the world in the two sides and that later on uh, became a foundation for the Truman doctrines when, uh, when the first time America declared uh, to the world you see we would uh, agree to provide all kind of support and assistance to the peoples who require support from us and those who wish to establish establish a, uh, establish a institutions uh, that is based on the national uh, national integrity against um, uh, aggressive movements and that seeks to impose uh, impose a totalitarian regime upon them means it was the foundations means first time america openly declared that you see we are ready to help uh, the people who want to establish a system that would favor a liberal democratic form of the uh, system rather than a totalitarian regime upon uh, upon uh, them by a forces that believes in the some this kind of system. This Truman doctrine somewhere uh, created a, a a division between the East and West more, and then both both the groups started uh, signing number of agreements with the one and another. And uh, this uh, this open uh, statement started with the help of the Turkey and the Greece because Turkey and uh, Greece, they, they were facing a political instability kind of things in their, their own states and they required, they, they wanted support from the Great Britain but, but due to the financial crisis in the Great Britain, the Great Britain asked the America to help the Turkey and uh, Greece to uh, get away from the communist insur insurgents and the Henry two men went to the Congress to seek a 400 billion dollar help for the uh, Turkey and the Greece and there he requested you see if you would have to establish if you would have to support uh, the society or the country uh, to establish a democratic form of the system then you would have to grant us this 400 billion because this communist insurgents trying to 
approve the system that is based on the will of the free people and that create a more problem for the uh, <coughs> world order in the coming times and what we say it you see uh, uh, then how the world started moving fastly and here wh what we see you see the uses are refusal to cooperate with its western allies uh, allies in considering germany as a single unit then the us commander general lucas clay ordered to suspend repatriations from the western zone to the ussr then it resulted cooling of the east west relations and divisions of the germany and then lastly what we are witnessing in 1949 the, the western zone became federal republic of germany and the eastern zone became the germany german democratic republic what we try to understand to see the way the henry truman openly started asserting that to see we are ready to support openly the, uh, against the communist regime and uh, against the communist insurgency and then the repercussions we would see in the uh, germany where there are four administrative zones and the uh, and uh, the soviet union st uh, stopped all kind of uh, assistance to the uh, uh, west western zone and uh, the, and that led to um, some kind of administrative problem and in response to that what we witnessed that the uh, uh, the american commander general lucas clay also suspended all kind of uh, 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 repatriations uh, for the ussr because see when the agreement was signed in the yalta it was understood that because the soviet union faced a lot of uh, losses in the second world war so as long as the soviet union would not uh, uh, get overcome uh, with uh, uh, repatriation uh, from uh, the germany the uh, the the zone which uh, which, uh, which were under the influence of the uh, uh, great britain france and america would also uh, sub started sub uh, would also support the uh, uh, <coughs> america uh, no no sorry it's a soviet union but that would that would not happen because the world the way they started uh, the world has started unfolding that created a lot of divisions and later on what we have witnessed uh, to uh, in germany got divided and new systems formed there and as the germany got divided uh, in the 1949 the world started mo moving more fastly and the ussr started playing more active role uh, in the eastern uh, uh, eastern zone and he, it annexed the baltic republics of lithuania estonia and latvia and then also installed a new communist government in eastern europe bulgaria romania poland germany albania yugoslavia and finally in yugoslavia so uh, then the another side also the Washington also started uh, encircling the Moscow by number of agreements with different regions like Rio Treaty with Western Hemisphere, especially in the Latin American countries. Then the NATO with the earlier with the 12 countries, then the 50 countries in the European U uh, Union, and then in the Anjus with the Australia and the New Zealand, and then the Baghdad pa Pact in the uh, by the uh, from uh, Baghdad Pact. Signed with the Iraq, Iran, Turkey, Great Britain, and the CETO that is in the Southeast uh, Asian nations. So what we have witnessed that both the both the power after the Yalta and post dem conference and after the Iron uh, Curtain speech and the policy of containment, both started encircling each other, and the Soviet Union started influencing its area of zone in the Eastern Germany and the Eastern Europe and established their own puppet, go puppet government and another side. Uh, to not uh, other government or other area would fall under the communist regime the america would start signing number of agreement and they started providing all kind of military and economic support and what we witnessed that when they signed a rio treaty when they signed a nato agreement then when they signed the uh, anjus and when they signed the baghdad and cito they, they provided them this kind of military and economic support and they openly uh, counter the soviet policy where they uh, started uh, supporting all kind of communist regime because when when the china was lost america was quite suspicious and they thought ki no 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 we would have to provide a support to kahne ka arth hua ki humne dekha ki duniya badi fast gati se move karne lagi khas karke yalta aur post dem iron curtain speech ke baad aur ek policy of containment jo tha uh, जिस जिसके माध्यम से जॉर्ज क्रेन एंड निकोलॉब ने दोनों ने इस बात को ए, ए, जो एम्बेसडर थे दोनों दोनों कंट्री में वो इस बात को का, 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 का प्रयास किए इस बात को संदेश भेजे कि 
यदि हम एक दूसरे को कंटेन नहीं करेंगे तो वैश्विक व्यवस्था में एक शक्ति जो है दूसरी शक्ति पर हावी हो जाएगी और इसी सोच को लेकर हम देखते हैं कि बाद में पूरी दुनिया जो उन्नीस सौ से नब्बे के बीच में एक पॉलिसी ऑफ कंटेनमेंट के आधार पर कंटेनमेंट ऑफ कैपिटलिज्म एंड कंटेनमेंट ऑफ कम्युनिज्म के नाम पर दुनिया बट गई और दोनों जो है एक दूसरे को इंसर्कल करने की कोशिश करने लगे यूरोप में हमने देखा कि स्टर्न यूरोप में सोवियत यूनियन ने उन्नीस सौ के बीच में नंबर ऑफ पॉपेट गवर्नमेंट जो कम्युनिस्ट गवर्नमेंट खास करके जो स्टर्न यूरोप का था रोमानिया हो चाहे बुलगारिया हो चाहे चुगस्लाविया हो चाहे गुस्लाविया हो इन तमाम जगहों पर अपनी सरकार स्थापित की और साथ ही साथ पोलैंड को भी अपने कब्जे में रखा और दूसरी तरफ अमेरिका ने चाहे वेस्टर्न जोन के जितने भी एलाइज थे उनके साथ एक एग्रीमेंट साइन किया साथ ही साथ लेटिन अमेरिकन कंट्री को सुरक्षा प्रदान की ऑस्ट्रेलिया न्यूजीलैंड को प्रदान किया बगदाद पट के तहत मिडिल ईस्ट में अपने प्रभाव को स्थापित किया सीटों के तहत ईस्टर्न साउथ ईस्ट एशिया में अपने प्रभाव को स्थापित करने का प्रयास किया तो एक पॉलिसी ऑफ इंसर्कलमेंट की जो थी वो दोनों देश एक दूसरे पर आगे बढ़ाते गए और एक प्रकार से दुनिया जो है इसी आधार पर आगे बढ़ती चली गई तो कहने का पूरा का पूरा जो नरेटिव्स है वो ये दिखा दिखाने का प्रयास करता है कि जो 1945 के बाद जो यह कोशिश की गई थी कि विश्व व्यवस्था एक शांति सही ढंग से कार्य करेगा और उसमें जो वार टाइम कोलेशन है वो पीस टाइम कोलेशन पार्टनर के रूप में विश्व व्यवस्था को एक नई सोच और व्यवस्था देगी वो संभव नहीं हो पाया और उन्नीस सौ के बीच में ही दुनिया को यह पता चल गया कि दुनिया जो है दो ध्रुवों में बढ़ चुकी है और जो नए राष्ट्र राज्य इमर्ज करेंगे या जो राष्ट्र राज्य हैं उनको यह तय करना पड़ेगा कि वह ईस्टर्न साइड में है या वेस्टर्न साइड में वेस्टर्न साइड में क्या वो कैपिटलिज्म को पसंद करते हैं या कॉम्युनिज्म को पसंद करते हैं तो इसी बात को लेकर जो हमारा थर्टिकल प्रपोजिशन है जो सैद्धांतिक आयाम है उसकी हम सेकेंड यूनिट पर हम चर्चा करने की कोशिश करते हैं कि आखिर क्या यह सही था कि वैचारिक लड़ाई थी या कुछ यह दो दो महान महान शक्तियों के बीच की लड़ाई थी या यह एक अंतर्राष्ट्रीय रेस था या एक ह्यूमन नेचर या कंफ्लिक्चुअल नेचर था इस बात की हम चर्चा करने की कोशिश थोटिकल प्रपोजिशन में करने की कोशिश करते हैं हेयर वन सेकेंड विथ स्टार्ट टू एनालाइजिंग कि वेदर वेन आफ्टर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द होल द नेरेटिव of the emergence of the cold war where we started discussing about you see the cold war was started due to the yalta due to the conflict emerged in the yalta conference then in the postin conference the way soviet union declared itself that see it uh, it signed an agreement with the communist government of the poland and then the post postin conference postponed that and concluded that you see the peace time supplement would uh, take time and then the iron curtain speech uh, of the western churches which divided the east based on the ideological regions then the policy of containment by the uh, george cannon and the nikola nikola of the russian ambassador of the mirror image and then the way the world unfolded unfolded itself where the number of government uh, race started between the communist russia and the capitalist america that they would uh, Uh, expand their influence of zones in the Europe and where this in the whole this turn Europe the Soviet Union uh, uh, dominated and uh, deputed their own puppet government in the, in the all the regions and the western Europe through the NATO uh, they provided all the military and strategic support and with the Mars, uh, Marshall plan they started providing all kind of economic assistance to the western Europe countries and then with the other agreement uh, they started providing support to the Middle East, uh, Latin America, and the South East Asian countries, and that uh, divided whole the world. So whether it was a ideological uh, conflict or whether it was a two power rivalry conflict, here we are going to discuss about these things. And here the, we are discussing what are the nature, whether it was the ideological, whether it was not that. But here the Fred Halliday, this slide what we see, the Fred Fred uh, Halliday, leading British scholars on the Cold War, argued that. ideological difference was the central dynamics of the post war east west conflict he is telling you know, it's ideological what the western churchill said he was repeating the same point it was the ideological they say unlike revisionist and traditionalist scholars halliday uh, was not arguing that either capitalism or communism was to blame for the cold war he was simply saying that the <coughs> that very existence of the two social system tensions inevitable and they say ki this was so he argued for the two regions capitalism and communism inherently incompatible system and both possessed a linguistic drive to create recreate themselves on a global scale now see they are telling you see we should not just confine this uh, east and west rivalry on the on the questions of communism and the uh, 
capitalism. They are telling, see, these are two different social set of systems and both ha have having aspirations to dominate at the world level. So, as long as both systems would survive in the world system, there would be conflict and both are incompatible to each other because one is considering the state would provide all kind of support and substance and the other would saying you know uh, uh, world socialism would provide uh, 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 emancipation to the human being so th they are telling you see there are basically ideological uh, differences one is talking about you see the state and within the world system you would get all kind of emancipation uh, of your desires. Others say, Ki, as long as the state would be, would be the here, you would not get it, and or any kind of emancipation from the uh, this uh, inst uh, is, uh, system of exploitations. So they are telling, you see, it's not a, a, it's not a question of capitalism and communism. It is a question of two different set of systems, and as long as one would not get uh, uh, alienated. Uh, 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 the world would not uh, see a peace. Therefore, he talked about, you see, it was ideological confrontation, but ideological confrontation was not based on the capitalism and communism. Basically, it was based on you know, what kind of uh, investic drive, uh, investic systems would provide a emancipation to the human society. Then, Halliday further added that the class of civilization only can provide a partial explanation. For him, if a difference were the sole cause for the Cold War, then why did the Cold War begin in 1945 and not in 1947? Why the Cold War was directed against the SSR and not against the China? Now see, then he questioned, see, if it was the ideological war only on the basis of the communism and capitalism and not uh, on the basis of the two, two social systems, then why not it was started in 1947? And why it was not against, in the 90, against the China after 1971? So, they question it. They say it was basically a two set of social systems, and one the uh, another social set of systems started following the uh, the same set of social systems. Then the, all the ideological rivalry uh, uh, ended between the capitalism and communism, and all the structural flourishing. So he said, you see, it was not basically a, 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 a policy of containment what the Kenyan and others started t t talking about. You see, it, it is a containment of communism and containment of capitalism. But basically, it, it's saying it's a it's a it's a contest between the two social set of systems. As, as long as the two social set of systems would be exist, uh, the conflict would be there. So, can I say that Fred Halliday has done a very good job in understanding this issue? बैचारिक लड़ाई तो थी लेकिन बैचारिक लड़ाई इस बात को लेकर नहीं थी कि आप कम्युनिज्म का विरोध करें या कैपिटलिज्म का विरोध करें बेसिकली कम्युनिज्म और कैपिटलिज्म का विरोध ना होकर ये टू सेट ऑफ सोशल सिस्टम को लेकर लड़ाई थी जिसकी दोनों की ड्राइव जो थी वो था कि वैश्विक स्तर पर हम अपने विचार को आगे कैसे ला सकें तो वो कहता है कि देखिए यदि मान लीजिए कि आइडियोलॉजिकल विवाद होता तो 1917 में जब बॉल्सेविक क्रांति उसी समय से होता तब फिर 1949-40 के बाद 41 के बाद सोवियत यूनियन के साथ इन लोगों का अलायंस कैसे हुआ या फिर 1971 के बाद चीन के साथ इनकी इनकी दोस्ती कैसे हुई तो वो कहते हैं कि बेसिकली यह लड़ाई जो था यह आइडियोलॉजिकली नेचर जो था लेकिन यह बेसिकली लड़ाई थी एक वैश्विक व्यवस्था को स्थापित करने की जिसमें यह कहा गया था कि भाई जो कम्युनिस्ट सिस्टम के द्वारा जो वेस्ट फिलियन नोशन ऑफ स्टेट सिस्टम को क्वेश्चन किया गया था या यह कही गई थी कि नहीं जो है विश्व में एक समाजवादी व्यवस्था ही वैश्विक समुदाय को एक बेहतर सामाजिक जीवन दे सकता है उस बात को लेकर ये संघर्ष था न कि इस बात को लेकर संघर्ष था कि कम्युनिज्म को कंटेन करना है या कैपिटलिज्म को कंटेन करना है तो इसी बात को फिर जो हम रियलिस्टिक परसेप्शन जो है that 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 analyze in the very differently they say it see the rest viewed the cold war as a typical great power struggle and it is not basically a struggle between the ideology and they say that the struggle of the us and the ssr were doomed for military struggle for preeminence after the collapse of the old europe order of the end of the world war the us and ssr had global pretensions and that time therefore the cold war began in 94 it is a very simplistic understanding uh, the realist trying to tell us you see it was pre this time because it was not neither ideological nor any other factor. It was a struggle because, see, the, in the anarchical situation, the two major military power emerged after the Second World War, that is the US, USA and the SSR. So both competed against each other to establish their area of influence at the world level. So considering that, 
you see the world war was started due to the containment of capitalism and communism that is completely a rubbish argument it was the human nature that is the conflictual world is anarchic and due to this conflictual nature of the human being uh, we see everyone is competing for the power so equally the soviet union and america also com started competing uh, against each other for their influence of power रियलिस्ट ने इसको बड़ी सरह सहज अंदाज में कहने का प्रयास किया कि भैया ये तो वैचारिक लड़ाई थी ना कोई ऐसी कोई इसमें बहुत बड़ी बात थी देखिए मानवीय स्वभाव जो है वो संघर्ष में होता है सत्ता के लिए संघर्ष करता है इसलिए द्वित विश्व युद्ध के बाद अमेरिका और सोवियत यूनियन ही मात्र दो महाशक्ति बची थी ग्रेट ग्रेट ब्रिटेन की शक्ति खत्म हो चुकी थी फ्रांस की शक्ति खत्म हो चुकी थी जर्मनी बिल्कुल हार चुका था जापान की भी स्थिति खत्म हो चुकी थी तो स्वभावतः है कि दो महत्वपूर्ण शक्तियां उभरकर विश्व के सामने आई और दोनों महत्वपूर्ण शक्तियाँ अपनी अपनी सत्ता और व्यवस्था को स्थापित करने के लिए चूंकि एक विश्व राज्य व्यवस्था के रूप में है वहाँ पर एक दूसरे के खिलाफ अपनी पॉलिसी को आगे बढ़ाते चले गए तो इसमें इसलिए इसमें कोई ऐसा बहुत बड़ा विवाद नहीं है कि आखिर ये वैचारिक था या कुछ और था या वस्तुतः एक सिंपल कन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट था जो इस आधार पर था कि कौन सी व्यवस्था अपनी सत्ता अन्य व्यवस्था पर स्थापित करेंगे देन द थर्ड परसेप्शन थे आइडियलिस्टिक परसेप्शन आइडियलिस्टिक largely accepted the consensus view of the beginning of the cold war however they were more optimistic about the future hadley will not idealistic himself argued that the state are conscious of certain common interest and common values and believe themselves to be bound by common rules and institutions but idealistic said that definitely there is a ideological uh, confrontations as well as the power struggle but see the way the realist started analyzing that see both are competing against each other and both are trying to establish their preeminence on each other that is not the case the case may be possible you see if the proper uh, world institutions would uh, started playing a more important role then the case would be different and 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 both the power would started cooperating with uh, each other and the system would be established at the world level where due to the um, equality among them in the military might and other economic interest world would see the uh, world institution would function more properly so they say kisi we can consider kisi definitely there is a contrast of interest but it doesn't means kisi the way realistic uh, started analyzing is so no no due to the class of interest the, due to the power struggles it's all happened they are saying kisi we can also discuss about kisi if the world institution would work more properly then the thing would be different then the interesting view what did they say it held, held a more radical view and denied that a basic class of interest exists between the two power, power blocks they argued the opposite that conflict of interest existed between the elites of the two sub super power the cold war they say was internally internally rather than externally generated externally it was the result of domestic politics now see the internationalist view is something like like, like a post modernist and the feminist they are telling you see it is the power or the new marxist kind of understanding that link is in the cold war began not due to the external atmosphere it began due to the uh, necessities of the domestic politics to uh, to uh, to uh, to buttress the interest of the political leaders and anyhow suppress the demand of the <coughs> demand of the people so the main scholar like mary keller called the east west conflict an imaginary war it was basically a conflict between the north and south and they want to just suppress their domestic aspirations so see here there is a complete contrast what we are witnessing that one is telling it is not the east and west it was it, it was a, a contest between the north and south rather than the east and west तो पूरा का पूरा ये हम देखते हैं कि जब हम आइडियलिस्टिक एडियल, परसेप्शंस और इंटरनेशनल परसेप्शन को देखने की कोशिश करते हैं तो आइडियलिस्टिक ये कहता है कि भाई ठीक है द्वितीय विश्व युद्ध के बाद जो एक नई विश्व व्यवस्था आई उसमें दो महत्वपूर्ण सत्ता के रूप में उभार आया तो स्वभावतः है कि संघर्ष तो होना था तो हुआ चाहे वैचारिक हो या शक्ति के लिए हो लेकिन यह कहना कि केवल अपनी प्री एमिनेंस और एक सत्ता दूसरे को हटाने के लिए ही इस प्रकार का युद्ध हो रहा स्थित युद्ध हुआ ऐसा नहीं था बल्कि वह कहीं कोशिश कर रहा था कि यदि अंतर्राष्ट्रीय संस्थाएं सही ढंग से काम करती और करती तो व्यवस्था कुछ और भी हमें देखने को मिलता उसी प्रकार से इंटरनेशनलिस्ट यह कहीं कोशिश करते हैं कि यह जो एक अवधारणा विकसित की गई है कि ईस्ट वेस्ट का रिलेशन जो था वो वैचारिक था और दोनों एक दूसरे पर अपनी सत्ता प्रभुता स्थापित करने की कोशिश कर रहे थे कहते कि बिल्कुल एक कपोल कल्पना है कह रहा है कि ये वस्तुतः एक 
उत्तर और दक्षिण के बीच बीच संघर्ष था और वहाँ के जो 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 कोल्ड वॉर पूरा देखने को मिला वह एक इमेजनरी वॉर के कल्पनिक युद्ध के रूप में दिखाया जा रहा था जिसके तहत यह प्रयास किया जा रहा था कि किस प्रकार से जो हम उनकी जो डोमेस्टिक पॉपुलेशन था वो अपनी आकांक्षाओं और विकास की बात ना करें या जो पावर एलिट्स थे वो उन पर बहुत अधिक बोझ ना आ सके मांगों की और जो आर्म इंडस्ट्रीज थे वो अपने इंटरेस्ट को सर्व करते रहें तो इस प्रकार से अलग अलग व्यवस्थाएं देखने को मिली उसी तरह से एक लास्ट पोर्शन जो हम देखने को मिलता है स्टेबिलिटी थ्योरी ये कहता है किसी इट हैज़ ए कम्पलीटली डिफरेंट परसेप्शंस एंड इट सेज किसी दे कंसिडर इट वॉज नॉट द पीरियड ऑफ द ग्रेट टेंशन एंड अदर इट वॉज ए लॉन्ग पीस वेन दे सेक इट्स अ लॉन्ग पीस इट डजेंट मीन्स दे आर टेलिंग किसी लाइक वेन द रियलिस से कि वर्ल्ड सिस्टम इज एन आर्क दैट डजेंट मीन्स द क्या ऑस इक्वली दे आर सेंग कि स्टेबिलिटी डजेंट मीन्स हियर डेट दे आर टेलिंग देर वॉज नो फंडामेंटल रायबडी देर वॉज नो प्रिंसिपल डिफरेंस बिटवीन द सोवियत यूनियन एंड अमेरिका दे आर टेलिंग दैट वॉज एग्जिस्टिंग बट दे आर टेलिंग सी Uh, you have to understand due to the equal power sharing between the both of them we see that there were no third war there were not great war they are telling we have to accept it more than 21 million people uh, uh, <coughs> killed in this uh, 45 years of the struggle between the cold war then the eastern europe uh, remained dominated uh, by the soviet forces and uh, then we also saw you uh, see see the gap between the rich and poor widened but after all what we have witnessed that there was a long peace what we witnessed there was no great war happened like the first world war second world war to kahne ka arth hai ki jab hum is puri vyavastha ko charcha karne ki koshish karte hain to stability thodi ek nayi baat karne ka prayas karta hai kahta hai ki hum mante hain ki sangharsh hua lekin sangharsh jo tha wo chote chote astar par hue main maya bhi mante hain ki 21 lakh log mare gaye hum ye bhi mante hain ki ye yah jo hai ye jo third world के एरिया में काफी संघर्ष हुए हम ये भी मानते हैं कि गरीब और अमीरों के बीच खाइयां बढ़ी लेकिन आप यह भी देखेंगे कि फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर और सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वॉर की तरह कोई मेजर वार नहीं हुआ और इसलिए नहीं हुआ क्योंकि दो महाशक्ति के रूप में वहां पर दो राज मौजूद थे और इसी बात को बाद में जो है ऑर्थोडॉक्स व्यू रिविजनिस्ट स्कूल्स एंड पोस्ट रिविजनिस्ट अपने अपने ढंग से कोशिश करते हैं इस बात को समझाने के लिए कि दुनिया में कोल्ड वार क्यों हुआ एक अमेरिका पर आरोप लगाता है दूसरा सोवियत यूनियन के पक्ष को लेता है तीसरा जो है कहता है कि इट वॉज बेसिकली ए कंटेस्ट बिटवीन द लीडर्स पर्सनैलिटीज मिस परसेप्शन एंड मिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑल प्लेड ए पार्ट इन प्रोड्यूसिंग ए टेंगल ऑफ रिलेशन तो पूरी की पूरी जो अंडरस्टैंडिंग हमारी है यहाँ पर कोल्ड वॉर की वेन वी स्टार्ट एन एनलाइजिंग इट दे आर टेलिंग सी वी वी स्टार्ट एन एनलाइजिंग फ्रॉम द याल्टा टू पोस्ट डैम टू आयरन कर्टन टू डिविजन ऑफ द जर्मनी टू द पॉलिसी ऑफ कंटेनमेंट to then number of formation of the nato and the others and that led to the emergence of the new world order and that led to the emergence of the cold war world war then when we started discussing about the nature of the cold war then we are finding that there is a realistic perception there is a uh, fred holiday perception of traditionalist views then there is a perceptions of by the idealist and internationalist and then the stability theory talking about it see we would not witness any kind of great uh, war that is the big thing of the uh, big achievement of the cold war and then what we say see orthodox traditionalists started uh, accusing that you see due to the failure of the yalta and post dam uh, the whole the world war began otherwise the world would be different and then after after revisionist started asserting you see it was the america's dominance because they started talking about you see america was on the top of economy and military might america had a dominance of the atomic power america had a dominance of the economic power because in the 50s or in the 40s what we witnessed every world was shattered by the economic losses uh the great britain uh, france all were shattered so within were shattered america was on the pinnacle and it was providing gnp of 50 percent 50% gnp of the world output and then they started dominating across the world they wanted to impose the principles of the america's economic order so it was america rather than the soviet union that let, that created the emergence of the cold war and then lastly the post revisionists they trying to tell us neither it's america nor it was the soviet union it was basically the domestic politics of the soviet union and america it was basically leaders personalities like the mao like stalin like uh, churchill like uh, henry truman they basically created such kind of misperceptions that led to the uh, tangle of relations and tension between the
world war so these all factors they analyze according to their own perspective thank you with this note thank you so thank you so much for giving us this session on cold war dear friends you can write to us at info.cc at nic.in this is the id where you can put your questions as well as your feedbacks too if you wish to have a lecture on any important topic then do write to us at the same id we are taking your leave with the promise that we are going to meet again soon with this note thank you sir thank you so much